2022. If it's 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, it's time for This Week in Waukesha. I'm your host, Don Brown, downtown Donnie Brown, coming to you live and local from the office of former Alderman Don Paul Brown, also known as the Walk Radio Studios here at 217 Wisconsin Avenue here in the NAMI building, right around the corner from Theodore Yeomans Park, where we are proud to recognize our suffragette heritage here in the Shaw. Want to wish everyone a happy Saturday morning as we get closer to um, the big holiday season. Actually, we're in the holiday season and um, not too cold today. So it looks like it could be a great day for shopping and uh, frolicking here in uh, the light snow. And um, I have two very special guests today to talk about a very important topic. um, And that is the WIAA, the Wisconsin Interscholastic Athletic Association's decision to completely ignore the petitions of Waukesha South's Black Shirt Nation um, to move our football program out of the uh, Classic 8 uh, Conference for Football. And uh, these guests are South Football Super Dad, uh, Jared Dable, who's been on the show and has been on many of my halftime interviews um, for football and basketball. Jared, welcome. How are you today? I'm good, Don. Thanks Great. for having me. Thanks for the the, the donuts. <laughs> See, you're, you're following your good friend uh, Don Teague's lead on uh, on bearing gifts of uh, sweet confectionaries. So yeah, I can't let him one up me. Thank you for that. <laughs> and then, it's all about competition, right? That's right. And. Um, <laughs> Of course, another great guest, and you'll be hearing him. Uh, he'll he'll you'll, he'll be all yours for the next two hours, starting at nine o'clock. Uh, James Santel, Morning Cannolis, um, retired U.S. Attorney, here to talk about uh, legal issues and legal implications uh, regarding uh, the WIAA. So, looking forward to jumping into that. But uh, before we do, just a few announcements. Um, not a great week for our Blackshirt basketball program, uh, losing uh, two conference games Tuesday and Friday. The first two, uh, Muskego. And then the second um, last night um, here at home against uh, Oconomowoc. So, but uh, so they're they're two and two in conference, two and four overall. But this Tuesday they had to cross town rivals Waukesha West uh, for a big game. So tune in for that. Coverage starts at six thirty here on Walk Radio. And um, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge our, our fine engineer Calvin, who's enjoying one of Jared's donuts right now. So hello, Calvin, and. Um, I have a, a, a Christmas holiday gift for all of you here in the Shaw, and that is um, Jamboree is only 26 days away. The Waukesha's premier winter festival, January 13th to the 22nd. So mark your calendars. Uh, go to Jan, J-A-N-B-R-E-E dot org, B-O-R-E-E dot org. And it, it's a, one of the great Waukesha heritages where we believe uh, – there are, there's no bad weather, only bad clothes. So we look forward to seeing all of you outside uh, coming for the Jamboree. So now on to the important issues of the day. And I think as a starter, uh, we'll allow Jared to start to kind of give us, give everyone that's, that may be new to this issue, um, the background here of why Waukesha South wants to, needs to leave um, the very tough uh, Classic 8 football conference. Jared, the mic is yours. Well, thank you. So you're right. We need to leave. Um, Over the past 21 years, uh, we have a 5% win against our conference. Um, It's not like we're losing games 27-24, 35-31. It is uh, we're losing by an average of 42 points. I mean, there's no, as bad as it sounds, it's not a competition anymore. It's a bloodbath. Um, we go out there and we put our best kids out on the field, and these kids give 120%. They give their heart. They give everything for just complete and utter domination. I mean, as bad as it sounds, they're embarrassed out there. Um, teams are purposely running up the score. We've seen teams up by 35 points with a minute 30 to go in the game, passing the ball, trying to get touchdowns. Mm. I mean, that's at that point, that's not sportsmanship. That's just simply... We're just trying to humiliate you. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's not just South. I want to make that clear. North is in the same boat we are. Um, when they go out and they play our conference teams, it's not really all that close. Um, they do well against non-conference teams, as do we. They believe yeah. they beat two playoff teams from non-conference 
teams last year, you know, and, and we correct. were 2-0 and oh in non-conference games yep. last year, and they were great games. Mm-hmm. We're not blowing these other teams out. Now, by last year, you mean this past season? This past season, season. this past okay. season. Yep. Um, so. You know, we're not blowing these teams out. We're not beating them 52 to nothing. You it's know, good it's good competition. And the West Dallas Hale game where three lead changes in the last three minutes of the game. Yeah. Great game to watch. Yeah. And and even the year before when we lost by a close, that was still a great game to watch. Yep. And Very well matched. When we beat Janesville, we beat Janesville um, two years ago by Hail Mary, Hail Mary yeah. with no time left. I mean, those are games that we want to be participating in, even if it's not a, you know, a win. But if we're going out there and being competitive, and that's all we want. We just right. want to be competitive and even playing field. Yeah. Um, we lose games 14 to 12. Mm-hmm. Me as a parent watching that, I'm going to be okay with that. I mean, sure. I don't, I'm sure the coaches yeah, aren't going to be upset about happy. one or two plays like a parent does. Yeah, yep. but but when we're going out there and I see the opposing team grabbing towels on their running back as they're running down the sideline, way late hits out of bounds, nothing's called, yeah. and that seems to be okay in this conference when you're playing South because it's South. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, you know, and we just can't have that anymore. We need to be moved to a conference where it's a Fair level, even playing field. Yep, and and that's that's the message that we want to try to get out here. We're not trying to move to a conference to dominate. We're moving to a. We want to move to a conference where it's going to be fair. Sure. And um, Coach Darnell Wiltz, the head football coach of um, the varsity team, as well as the whole football program, um, who's on his way to Iowa to visit some some family for the holidays, he wrote an editorial that was published in the Freeman. And it's entitled, When is Enough Enough? And this article, it came out about a month ago, I believe. Yep. And um, the numbers are there. So it isn't just two angry dads here, myself and you know, both our, our boys have been playing football together since fifth grade. And um, But, again, record sent from 2002 to 21, according to Coach Wiltz's article, uh, in the conference is 42 and 135, a 23.7 win percentage. And I imagine... You know, 39 or 40 of those wins came probably in the the aughts, you know, in that first decade of the of the millennium. Yeah. So uh, last 10 seasons, uh, that's gotten even lower, 20.8 um, percentage uh, record. Um, and then you get to the non-conference, and you're talking a 26 and 11 record during that same time period, 2002 to 21. And then out of conference, um, there's, uh, you know, the – yeah, it's a 68.42 win percentage. Which is not a dominating win percentage. Right, yes. It's a so, good win percentage, Yeah, but it's by far not dominating. So we're, we're not talking about trying to get a better conference um, like another non-classic eight football team left to go to a better, so they'd have a better seating and, and, and win a state championship. It's about the number of boys you see on the sideline and casts and crutches and, and again, just... And again, just getting humiliated and then having to cancel the last two games uh, this season. I didn't realize in the fall of 2020, it wasn't because of COVID that we had to cancel the last three games or three there. Maybe there were some of the JV freshman games. It was because of injuries mm-hmm. and lack of players. And, and there's also a mental health health factor. Oh yeah. You know, for these and, kids. I mean, when you're trying to build a program, nobody wants to play for a two and seven team. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to go out there. You know, you got these kids coming up and they see, you know that, well, they're going to lose to Oconomowoc, fifty-six to seven. You know they're sure. going to lose to Muskego, sixty-nine to fourteen. You know, why do I want to go out there and play for that team? I, you know, yeah. some of these kids that maybe played seventh, eighth grade football, now they get to high school. Like, mm-hmm. I'm done. I'm good. I don't. I don't need to go out there and be humiliated like yeah. that. And then we had a situation where the coaches, the athletic director Dan Schreier, people that are more expert at football. Petition our um, the leadership of our school administration to forfeit the last two games, and that initially gets denied. Correct. Which then you had been very vocal. We we'd led this big um, movement, this big um, storm, shall we call it? And the very next day, the administration changes their mind and says, "Yes, we're out there. We we're looking out for the best interests, the health of our boys." And and it, it it drew a lot of media attention. Like when instead of a homecoming game, we had kind of a, well, we always have our festival, but we had a really fun like touch football game. That was awesome. Was to watch yeah, too. and it was just great and the school spirit, no doubt. But um, so there's been a big enough media presence about this, at least in our part of our neck of the woods here in Southeast Wisconsin, and the fact that there was, you know, 
nothing, no thought about realigning the classic. And I'd heard that there were several proposals. Yeah, there were three proposals, I believe, that, that I heard yeah. of. And all of them would have been a better matchup for us. Like I said, none of them would have been something where we dominated sure. in it. Yeah. But I see us finishing probably middle of the pack, upper middle, third, fourth in, in the it's, conference, which is... It's a safer playing environment for our yeah. kids. You know, in, in the Classic 8, you've got linemen that are going to be Division one linemen. They're, they totally outsize us. Yep. Student bodies, two and a half to three times the size of, of South and North. A, a much larger field to pick from. I mean, yeah. when you look at schools like well, uh, Arrowhead... Affluent communities, yeah. ...that have... Five, six communities to choose from because there's no other high school for them to choose from, you know, yeah. in the area. Sure. You know, they've got 2,500 kids. Sure. Per, you know, to, to choose from to come play where yeah. South has a third of that. Okay. So in the two <clears throat> minutes we have before the first break, what has been your interaction with the WIAA as, as a parent? As, um, as, as a parent, I have emailed. Or even someone that's represented South football and you were, you were given that, you were deputized. Uh, it's been one way. Um, I have sent a number of emails, uh, tried to make phone calls to a lot of the people on the committees. Uh, I sent, I believe it was 36 emails uh, for Coach Wiltz's uh, letter. I forwarded that to all of them and asked for a response. I heard back from one mm -hmm. uh, that was in support of us. Um, nobody else responded back to me. I've gotten no feedback from anybody at the WIAA or the Classic 8 Conference. Okay. So, and then, you know, now we get into... You know, this it seems like the WIA is a big black hole. And then this is where our friend James Santel comes in because James had some really good questions. Is it a publicly, is it a public agency, a public organization? Um, we just found out it's not. It's, a, it's, a, it's what's known as an NGO, a non governmental organization. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. And um, who do they report to? Who in the state? Um, and then Jim has unearthed that there's also a legal history there. And, it, and um, anyway, Jim, if you don't mind, kind of give us um, just a quick synopsis. And I guess we have like 30 seconds here. Sure, sure. And I'll say even before we get into that, that you know, one of the things that struck me with uh, Coach Wiltz's uh, letter was just this reference again to health and safety. Uh, it says, you know, we have good players that do not get an opportunity to succeed in the game they love. We as coaches do the best we can teach and prepare our kids to play this game safely. Has to put our kids in harm's That's way. Great. All right. And that really brings us into that discussion. Stick around. More from James Centel on This Week in Walk Show. John, you're listening to what is arguably the greatest Christmas song of the 20th century, The Pogues with the late Kirstie McCall, The Fairy Tale of New York. And um, next week's show, which will be recorded because it's Christmas Eve and Calvin deserves a day off to be with his family. And so we'll be recording this show, but it'll be a lot of uh, Christmas memories um, here in the Shaw and then for um, other great moments and memories and, and why Christmas and the holidays is such a special time. But um, before we end of the break, uh, James Santel read a quote from Coach Darnell Wiltz from his editorial. When it, and I would, if it's okay, I'd love for you to repeat that, Jim. And also, uh, Coach Wiltz has texted me and says he's listening. So thank you, Coach. Make sure you keep your eyes on the road. I know you're traveling. And if uh, the reception becomes an issue, switch over to 540 a.m. And then, uh, as we discussed, you can also download the Civic Media app and just tick walk radio, and so you can you can listen to it from your phone. Uh, and then there's Facebook Live too. So, but uh, anyway, Jim, go ahead. Absolutely, Don. Good to be with you and Jared both, and talking about this. I should say at the outset, I am not a sports attorney. I'm not an athletics attorney, um, but I do litigate on a regular basis in a number of different areas. And as you said, we've chatted you and I and others about options here. What does one do when was confronted with the kinds of things that Jared has described here this morning? And again, I was stricken by the coach's comments in his editorial talking about sportsmanship and the things you try to teach young people, young boys, young girls, young men, young women, preparing them to play the game safely, but also preparing them for life, right? Uh, some great lessons out there. Um, asking the kids to put, put uh, we are asked to put the kids in arms way to make sure other programs in the Classic 8 Conference have a game plan, have a game. Uh, the injuries pile up and those kids do not come back 
the following season. We simply don't have the numbers to field all three levels and compete in the Classic 8 Conference. We do not belong in this conference. And Jared, that's what I think you were describing as well in the first segment, too. So I find that very compelling. There's an awful lot in the coach's editorial there that is worthy of consumption and uh, thought there as well. And it, it does uh, bring us then to thoughts about what one does. Jared, you described the fact that you have reached out to the WA, you sent many emails, sent uh, these editorials and other statements uh, to the board. It is significant, certainly, as we said at the outset, that the Wisconsin WIA is the Wisconsin Interscholastic Athletic Association. I think all those words are important. It's sort of where you begin, right, when you understand what a what an association like this is for. When you look at their constitution, their bylaws, those kinds of things, it is replete with these references to sportsmanship and fairness and making certain that there is a chance for people to enjoy the game, whatever it is, football, baseball, basketball, with uh, swimming, whatever it is, and that and animates a lot of what is out there in terms of what the WAIAA is all about. Interesting, a couple of other little facts as we get into this. Um, its history dates back to 1895. Excellent. It's probably one of the most, uh, the, the earliest continuing existing high school athletic organization in the entire country. And so it's this great responsibility, again, for uh, officials and overseeing junior high school, middle school athletics, high school athletics, of course, and administering sports, eligibility, conference alignments, and promoting sportsmanship. It has so many, many things within its ambit. Um, organizationally, I think this is important to understand. There's a body there. It's not just one or two people. Um, there is a board that has 11 members. Seven are chosen by the regions, three at large, a representative from the Wisconsin Association of School Boards. And there's an advisory council made up of 18 members providing governance and advice. And those also come from representative portions. And so I say all that just to indicate that this is, if not a completely democratic um, in the way that we think about a republic in our nation, still it is an organization that should be responsive uh, to people like Jared, others, and, and the coaches out there, and should be engaged with the community, ensuring that their mission through those boards and through the things that they're trying to accomplish are realized. And that even if... Regardless of its organizational status. Exactly, right, so. right. And, and again, Jared, as you just said, we're not always going to be perfectly satisfied with the results on the field, off the field. We're not asking for perfection, but there should be some response at least. There should be a sense that these boards are in fact engaged with the community in trying to address problems. And gosh, I think Jared, you've said this morning and, and sort of the, the Coach Wilkes has said the same thing. Others have said this. There certainly is an issue here that at a minimum by the boards and by its leadership uh, should command some interest and some discussion and some attempt to resolve it in a way that promotes the ultimate um, uh, goals of the WIAA. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I, as a parent, and after reading these results, I would like to see their reasoning behind the dismissal of this year after year. This isn't the first time that we've tried to leave the Classic 8. As, and there's never as, been a public explanation, correct? There's never been a public explanation. Yeah. I'd really like them to come out with one. I yes. would really like the their reasoning behind wanting to keep North and South in the classic case. And, and wouldn't right. they be legally compelled to issue some sort of statement? You know, and, and that's a or, very good question. So we also know quite well that uh, the WIAA has yes. been involved from time to time in litigation, right? Yes. Um, you look back and it, you have not done an exhaustive search of all this, but uh, there's certainly been a federal case way back in 1978 in front of a fellow that I used to practice in front of, named Ms. Myron Gordon. Uh, again, it's, it seems like antiquity now. But it had to do with whether uh, the Equal Protection Clause and had to do with whether or not um, limitations on, on involvement of young women in interscholastic activities and sports violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. And it came out of De Pere High School. Um, there were some uh, female students there who were denied permission to qualify for competition with the male students on the basketball team. Another one coming out of Washington High School denied permission to qualify for competition with male students on the varsity uh, swim and tennis teams. And in the end, again, the, the case is presented to Judge Gordon. Issues a very, very interesting, compelling opinion about the intersection of sports and the Constitution. And in the end, says uh, that indeed uh, the... The defendant's exclusion, that is, uh, of the plaintiffs, defendant being the WIAA of the plaintiffs, these young men and women, and the class they represent in this varsity interscholastic athletic program in a particular sport where such a program is provided for male students violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. In other words, you're going to do it for males, you've got to do it for females. Yeah. 
and goes on to say that they're permanently enjoined from excluding the plaintiffs. Sure, and sure. again, it's not this case, but yeah. it certainly indicates that you've got those fundamental notions of fairness and equal yeah. protection and we I would say precedence. decency, right? Yeah. And so you're there, that's in the federal so, court again many, many yeah. years ago. There's been at least okay. one other, a couple of other state sure. court cases, not always dispositive, yeah. but important We're cases We're coming out close there to a well. break, but when we come back to Coach Wolf who also wants to discuss that the demographics too here. There's there's um, some serious disadvantages that South has in relation to the rest of the Classic Eight. As this week in Waukesha continues, don't go away. Seeking Waukesha, and um, that's Tracy Chapman with talking about a revolution, and that's what we're talking about here this morning with Jared Dable and U.S. retired U.S. Attorney James Santel, host of Morning Cannolis, and we're addressing the uh, a great job on this live version, Calvin. I was expecting the canned version, but this is a treat. So. Um, I got to see Tracy seven years ago at one of the, the Guinness Flaws, and uh, yeah, she was fantastic. Anyway, um, so revolution we're talking about is just, we've had enough, just like the Coach Darnell Wilts article, enough is enough. And this kind of smug attitude towards us from the WIAA, maybe towards all schools. And another factor that Coach Wilts wanted to emphasize to us, and uh, I feel like he's here because he's texting me back and forth. So he's listening. I hope uh, Mrs. Wilts is driving. Uh, to Iowa, but um, the demographics. And in that editorial that Coach Wilt sent to the Freeman, the Freeman was kind enough to publish or you know, recognize the importance of this issue. First thing is the, well, we know about the student body. These schools are much larger. And the Waukesha South student body, uh, close to 55% is economically disadvantaged. Uh, the only other school that comes close is Waukesha North, which um, uh, is above 35%. All the rest are well under 20%. Another factor is um, South has um, close to 20% of its student body that has um, some sort of disability. And again, when you look at... Um, let me look at this again. Yep, it's close to 20%. When you look at the other schools... On average, those schools hug, you know, closer to like 15% or lower. And again, in a smaller student body, you know, those numbers add up. Those are factors. And in the six years Coach Wiltz has been associated with the program, they've never had more than 80 total participants. And, you know, to field a, a, a good football team, a competitive football team, my belief is you need at least 35. Yeah. Because there's 11 starters on either side of the ball. And, yes, you have some gifted athletes at this level. You can have them play both ways. But you want so there's that's 22. Then you also have special teams, and you need second string, third string, especially for your line. You need to give some of those those big men a break. <laughs> they're carrying a lot of weight, and they're you know a lot of contact. Um, and that's on the low end. You yeah. know, a lot of teams that don't cut will have as many as you know over 40 or 50, and um, we'll have our JV players suit up for varsity to show that we have maybe more of a robust lineup there on the sideline. Oh, you but know, and all the other bears. teams, all the other teams will do that too. They'll suit up their JV so it looks more intimidating. But sure, you know, we suit up our JV. We've got fifty kids on the sideline. Yeah. Where you go up against Oconomowoc, oh, Arrowhead, yeah. all these guys, they got ninety nine kids suited up on the other side. It's like, yeah, mm. oh, I remember every time you'd see Muskego show up at this big parade, there'd be like three buses of kids. Yeah, and, and the bus out. of coaches. Yeah. So, um, and. You know, fair play to Classic Eight. It's a great conference, and um, those teams are fun to watch. And yep. congrats, you know, congrats again to Kettle Moraine. They won state championship in their division. And, you know, this, this, yeah. All this isn't a knock on the other teams and the other coaches, players, whatever. They're going out. They're executing. They're playing yeah. well. They've got good programs. I mean, right. it's not a knock on those other teams. Yeah. I mean, my response is, let's put Arrowhead in the Big Ten. You know, kick Northwestern out for a year and, and, and see how they do against – you know, collegiate players. 
Or UW Whitewater. Great program, great yeah. football program. Yeah. Put and them maybe, in the Big Ten. Maybe, yeah, exactly. A closer analogy would be, you know, using Whitewater or Riven or, yep. and, and putting them in the Big Ten. And so it's, it's just not a fair, not a level playing field. Right. And, and, you know, as Jared was saying in one of the earlier segments, and Coach Wolf says it also in his very good editorial, there are several proposals for conference realignment that would provide a more equitable place for our school to participate. So please provide us the relief we were asking for. And that's always a part of any petition, right? It's an appeal. Uh, you, you come forward and you say, we've got a problem here, yeah. Jared, as you've said, Don, as you've said, we've got an issue. It's been longstanding. We've tried to resolve it. Um, but we've also, we're have also we not just presenting with a problem saying do something. We're also giving you a remedy here. Yeah. Here's the way to put this together. Maybe you've got a couple of alternatives, I think, Jared, you said. Why not explore those? At least open the door for that exploration yeah. about remedies. And, and the one Help that us. I heard yeah. that I thought would, would fit Waukesha South the best would have almost, uh, I, we call it the W Conference. I mean, yeah. you've got the three schools from Waukesha, Waukesha North, South, West. Um, you would have both West Dallas schools. And then you'd have two Wauwatosa schools. And then, you know, CMH. Yeah. I mean, you've got all the Waukesha, West Dallas, Wauwatosa schools. That would be a very good conference to watch. Yeah. I That'd mean, football. Yeah. everybody's yeah. almost... Level. I mean, I think you'd still have West and CMH that would, yeah. that would, you know, be number one, two, yeah, year to yeah. year. But you know, yeah. you know, if and Coach Wilt's another good point. If you were one of these um, programs, like Arrowhead, whose head coach came from North, who when he his first year he petitioned an open letter asking to take North out back then because he knew what that was like having to yep. move JV players up to varsity that just simply weren't qualified to play at that level because of very profound injuries that his varsity players had, and he recognized. And now it's like. Now that he's gone to Arrowhead and poached a couple of really good North players on his way out, radio silence. You don't hear anything from him in support of, of this idea. And But what po- Coach Wilson was saying is that if you were an Arrowhead, if you were a McGuanago, if you were KM, wouldn't you also be interested in a split up of the conference? Maybe take you know two or three of those juggernauts, put them in another conference, and – you know, again, you still have two or three in your conference, but you get some, maybe some teams that, um, you know, they're still competitive, but they're not like, uh, you know, every one of those teams we talk about are conference champions in any other, most any other conference, like Catholic Memorial is an example. I forget the conference, but they, they just rolled, they steamrolled on that woodland conference yeah. now, I believe. And they steamrolled on all of those teams. I mean, they went on a 34 0 run. Yeah. I mean, they ever were, since they left the classic eight, when they left the classic eight, yeah. they lost in the state championship this year. Um, very good coach team. I mean, oh, coach young, you know, 500 plus wins. Yeah. I so. mean, like I said, it's not a knock on these other programs, yeah. that, but we, we, as a, as a school size, uh, from an economical standpoint, we can't we can't raise the money that they raise. We don't have the boosters yes. that can sit there and say, you know what? Here here's five grand this year. Yeah. We sell our booster club passes, and yeah. even for a lot of parents in our in our community, sure, the ninety dollar booster club pass yeah. is a stretch for them. Yeah, and so I'm glad you know because I've had these conversations with 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 James Santel, Jim Santel here that he raised a good point is that we are getting into an equal rights issue here with our children. And could you speak to that again? Sure, absolutely. It raises these larger issues uh, that go right to the core of what athletics are all about, right? As you talked before, sportsmanship. I find, once again, as compelling as that concept of being on the playing field and having an opportunity to win, that's very important. Along the way, it does send those good messages. But once again, I come back to this notion that if there are injuries, if there are injuries being being ha- happening and they're sufficiently frequent and they're sufficiently serious, that is really something that, that the WIA should be hugely, hugely concerned about. Yeah. Um, I, I go back again and I, I look at the... The statements made by the director, uh, Stephanie Hauser, uh, we, we recall that back in early part of this year, there was this event involving St. Thomas More, a brawl, uh, nearly erupted uh, in their, their uh, state, uh, competing for the WIA state uh, championship. Um, they went into court and asked that the the game basically be be uh, replayed, re- reinstated, and the judge said, yes, you've got to give them the opportunity to go back and forth. In that connection, without saying whether that's right or wrong, this is what the director said. She said, our organization has bylaws, policies, and structures for handling grievances. When our membership chooses to circumvent those procedures, all that has been built by the membership over the years gets undermined, thereby weakening the association's governance. Then finally went on to say at the very end, the rules are member-driven and reviewed by us annually. The trend of of member schools appealing calls by on-site officials to the court 
deter undermines those officials, but also the rules that are in place. Yeah. Um, the point of all of that from her is bring it to us. Um, bring these issues, whether you agree with what happens at St. Thomas More or not, bring it to us and have us resolve these things at our board. Bring to us something as, seriousness, as serious as sportsmanship and injuries and, and don't run into court right away. It's called exhausting your remedies. Why not do that? Why not open that door and have that exhaustion take place at the WIAA? I am very, I'm very certain. Again, I can't make recommendations about whether or not one goes into federal or state court as a result of this. But yeah. I can tell you that the judge is going to look at this and say, what have you done, parties, to try to resolve this in advance of bringing this into court? And if the answer is we made petitions but there's been no response, <laughs> she or he is going to say, well, gee, why aren't you talking to each other? Why aren't you doing that? I think that's what Ms. Hauser's invitation is, and that's what she should find follow up on, from my right. perspective, admittedly an outsider yeah. as I look at this situation. So related to this, because you talk about member-driven rules and policies, so Classic 8, Waukesha South gets completely ignored, denied, and now here's our selfish agenda, Jared and, and I as fathers of um, all Classic 8 football players. You know, our senior year, we may not have a football team next year. Right, right. And so can the WIA work with us and like, how about an exception that South can recruit kids or kids can transfer to South without the punishment of sitting out in a year, which which uh, WIA subjectively uh, imposes. You know, like when, when Jace Gilbert went from North to Arrowhead, he didn't have to sit out a year. Nope. Uh, that was kind so, of a rule that went into effect when um, I believe, when, when uh, LJ, LJ came from West to South. Came from West to South. We, we suddenly, angered one of the, the top teams, and yeah. now they, they cried and they got their way. Yeah. So I think it's about time that we get our way. So how about working with us then? Okay, if, if you're if you're... Um, you know, uh, what should we say? Died in the wall about keeping us in the conference. How about um, allowing North and South to merge for a team like they did in volleyball? And we yep. had a great volleyball, you know, and we're... Well, yet again, to do that, to, to go inter uh, to combine schools, you got to petition the WIAA. Yeah. you got to get their permission sure. to, to create that. And, I, and then there's this rule, well, there has to be eight teams in the Classic Eight. Well, there was nine when Catherine went, and you didn't seem to complain. Okay, now we're back to eight. What's wrong with seven? in a more competitive conference if we can combine the two schools for one, at least for one season. You, you lose a playoff out. spot. Right, right. Yeah. You lose and a playoff spot. Of yeah. compromise once so, again, right? That's what it's all about. Right. You often see in the legal field that everybody walks yeah. away from the table a little bit unhappy, right. but you've got something. Maybe it's in the middle. Maybe it's not perfect yeah. once again. Sure. Why not east, at least open the door to that negotiation, that discussion, and have that kind yeah. of engaged uh, discussion about uh, possible resolutions here? Well, Absolutely. you know, and... and you're not going to be able to make everybody happy. Right, right. I mean, everybody's got their own agenda. Mm -hmm. I mean, even within yeah. the school, I mean, there's no way to make everybody happy. Yeah. But if you and make, every, you know, almost everybody just a little bit more happy. Right. We can work right. with that. We can work with that. And but you can change it over even time, get right? You yeah. can work on these things. All right, this but, worked, this did not work. Um, that, too, is a part of an awful lot of settlements, an awful lot of judgments entered by courts. They'll say, come back and see this again in a couple of years and determine whether or yeah. not this is still working. Make it an evolving type of thing yeah. as demographics change. But that as, doesn't exist. Right, there, exactly. There's like this, uh, yeah. well, that means more work for us. Or, and Jim made a great point during the, during the uh, break because he did his, his, his discovery on WIA. And this is isn't just like a group of parents that are, you know, giving out snacks um, at, at game day. This is a very powerful organization that's complete overreach uh, authority. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at a WIA from uh, 2018, courtesy of Guide Star by Candid. This is public record. So you look at the salaries. Uh, Stephanie Hauser, current executive director, back when she was an assistant director, 115000 a year, almost 115000 a year. Um, 117,000 for the next one up, 125,000, 146,000. And then for the executive director at the time, 188,000, almost 188,000. Now, you know, fast forward to what do you think those salaries are today with, you know, colas and, and increases and in performance, assuming there's, you know, for th those kind of salaries those people command, there is an expectation that right. they're going to do the right there, thing, that there's expertise. Well, right. yeah. And considering you look at what, the high school coaches get paid. I think it comes out to their their bonus or whatever is yeah. about a dollar eighty five an hour for all the work that they put in right. to the amount of money they get. I mean, yeah. these high school coaches around here aren't getting one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I mean, yeah, yeah. not they, legally, they would anyway. love to, but yeah. you know, the, sure, they just not. And yeah. so for these higher ups to sit there and say we're just going to ignore you, mm -hmm. I think that's what's 
what's irritating me more is, you know, I know a number of parents that have reached yeah. out on on our behalf, not just South parents, but there's been, I've gotten a lot of support from a lot of the McQuanago parents, North parents, um, some of the Muskego parents have reached out to me in support, and we've just been ignored. Yeah. And, and we're the ones that are investing in our children. We're the ones that have the most risk when our children get hurt. Yep. Including our children. So something's got to change here. And we're going to talk about that in our final segment on this week in Waukesha. Do not go away. And we welcome your calls to 844 967 2789. This week in Waukesha continues. Gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember, Christ our Savior was born hey, we're on this day watch, uh, to save us all. And this is a Satan's wonderful cover of uh, we God astray. bless you, Mary, gentlemen, and we three kings. Of comfort By my North American joy, friends, Bernie and Ladies with Sarah McLaughlin. And uh, that's a beautiful letter. Be sure to check that out. And uh, hey, I want to thank my father in law, Rick Sand, let me know that the mic was on during the break. And I say, good. I, you know, I want people to hear what's going on. And um, lovely Christmas song, and, and we are in the Christmas spirit, but we're also very angry here uh, because of the way uh, our families, our boys, have been treated by the WIAA. W-A, two A's. W-I-A-A. And, uh, you know, give them another A. Hey, Coach Thor, uh, Coach Wiltz just texted in again, and um, he says we're doing a great job, and he appreciates that. So thank you, Coach Wiltz. And, uh, yep, we're going to keep fighting for you. And um, question for Jim here in this final segment is um, – what kind of recourse, legal right. recourse, next, does right? Waukesha right. South have in a situation like this sure. uh, against the big behemoth? And, um, you know, by the way, if you hear about me next day uh, starting my car and there's an explosion, uh, you, you may remember this show. <laughs> That's my remote start here. mine. I restart <laughs> mine just in case. Just in case. That's right. I can do that now. Right. Yeah. So. And we want to avoid Jim. all of that, right? And so, so the answer is, once again, we, I think we've identified it already, which is uh, the WIAA, given, given you've just described it as a behemoth, uh, Don, and, and it, it does have this huge responsibility. It is the only show in town. One of the things the judge will also ask is, gee, Mr. Santel, is there any other place you can go? to get a remedy out there? And the answer is no. The WIAA is it, and they exercise responsibility in all these areas. We said in the first or second segment here that there have been cases brought into a federal court, there's a state court precedent for this also. Um, there's a question always about standing, right? We've talked about that. And, and when I think about the possibility of identifying plaintiffs to bring a lawsuit, if that goes down, that that's the rubber going down here, the issue is, my son, my daughter, um, generally in athletics, maybe there are other issues out there involving other sports, has been materially affected in a way. Injuries, once again, strikes me as being at the top of the list. If you've got people historically and even on the teams right now who have been injured, and you can show, just as, as Coach Wilkes did in his very good editorial, by graphs and other information, there has been an increase. There has been a, a an imbalance when it comes to the number of injuries. That provides you with what's called standing, a basis to sue. That gives you the right to say, I have been injured by this. Then you add on to it things like spirit, which, which uh, Jared, you talked about early on. That just that notion of getting out there and seeing uh, the possibility of your having a level playing field out there. That, too, qualifies as standing and a basis upon which to go into court. I won't pontificate here today about whether that's a federal case, a, a state case, but I will say that that exhaustion, once again, is very important here. That notion of trying to speak to the agency, the association that's yeah. responsible for administering these rules, and if in fact, if in fact, in the end, there is no response and you've got no other recourse, then you do go into court and you find that lawsuit. They'll argue about jurisdiction, argue about standing, all those other things. But we still have a system here in America where you can get to judges, as we've seen recently and historically, who will take a look at these things and make decisions based upon constitutional principles and also even the principles set forth in bylaws, which the WA also has. And so we hope that that does not 
not happen. There should be continuing attempts to engage in this kind of productive discussion. If it doesn't, that is the kind of thing, again, that lawyers in the athletic area, in the sports area, again, I'm not that, but others are, Mm -hmm. do on a regular basis. Sure. Now, I've also been talking to um, uh, Chris uh, Krill, who's one of the uh, assistant coaches of the football team, and he uh, had the great fortune of reaching out to an attorney he knows, a, a corporate counsel, who reviewed the bylaws, as I believe you have to. And he, he says on paper, everything there is is on the up and up. It's actually very well structured. The big question is, is are they really following the bylaws? Is there application, the right? Yes. It's one thing yes. to have uh, documents set forth. If we've got a constitution in this country, if we don't follow it, uh, that's why courts yeah. get involved, right? Sure. So yeah. it's one thing to state things, another yeah. thing is what happens in reality. And that's what any judge, yeah. any panel of judges would always ask, no what's doubt. the reality yep. out there? And then there's another card I want to play, and I'm not speaking for her, but I, I feel I know her well. Um, our Lieutenant Governor-elect, Sarah Rodriguez, who is a Waukesha South mom, uh, her son uh, plays soccer, and she's also um, has an extraordinary public health background and served in the Peace Corps, and so public health is obviously very important to her. And we, through my networks, I'll be reaching out to her that to see if this is something she could play a lead on, and then recognizing that her immediate supervisor is um, was our education czar, you know, Governor Evers. And so, you know, that's the question too: is what is there someone in the state that WIA reports to or has authority over them or can compel them to do the right thing as a DPI is it indeed the governor's, uh, the executive branch? Right, and, and many of these things uh, can have formal and informal influence as well, as all of us know well, right? If the governor, lieutenant governor, if your state assembly, man or woman, if your state senator gets involved and can advocate on your behalf, that too is meaningful. And so letters written, I always say, uh, letters written to public representatives are important. Um, that's not to say you're going to get immediately the result that you want. It's not to say that we vote tomorrow on on those kinds of things, but it does have an influence, and public should generally be involved in those kinds of things, including the representatives of that public. No doubt, no doubt. So, Calvin, how are we doing on time there? Did I see two minutes somewhere? In there? Okay, great. So, I want to give both of you a chance for final comments. Uh, Jared, go first. No, final comment here is uh, as a South parent, as a former coach, and, and watching South football over the last decade. Um, I'm kind of sick of being bullied. I mean, that's what's happened to the school. I mean, give us an excuse. Give us a written response as to why you denied us for the yeah. third, fourth time now in five years. Um, because I mean, if you if you keep bullying, we're just gonna we're gonna start fighting back even harder. Yeah. I think this is a great first step, but we can't give up as a community, as a school. Keep writing to the WIA. Keep writing to the Classic Eight. Show support for Coach Wiltz and everything he's done. He is a phenomenal man altogether. He's a much better man than I am. I can tell you that much. Um, <laughs> he's listening, so I know he appreciates um, that. <laughs> I, I, I would I would not be taking the high road on this if I was in his position. Um, okay. Write to Dan Schreier. I mean, Athletic call him, director, email. Yeah. Show support and and. Keep pushing this. The season isn't upon us yet. There's still changes we can make. Sounds great. James Santel. The executive director of the WA said this uh, just about, what, uh, uh, nine, eight or nine months ago. She said, our organization has bylaws, policies, and procedures, uh, structures for handling grievances. I think what you had identified this morning, Don, Jared, our grievances uh, use those practices, those policies, to yep. get some remedy here. And I'd like Director Dan Schreier has um, filed a, uh, an appeal yes. to the initial decision. So, um very good about that. As uh, Coach Wiltz just texted a smiley face, uh, so that's great to hear. Love and, you, Wiltz. Uh, yeah, you know. And speaking about public involvement too, I just want to, and, and I'm not going off too far of a tangent. Is uh, we have some open seats here for City Council. I encourage any of you that want to serve to go to uh, the City Clerk's office. You only need 20 signatures, so call me here at Walk Radio if you have any help, need any help with that. And uh, want to thank again. Um, um, Jared Abel for joining us this morning. Thank South you, Football Super Dad. Uh, James Santel, who you'll be hearing more of next on Morning Cannolis. Always a pleasure with you, Doc. And uh, to all of you, uh, thanks for joining us this Saturday. Happy holidays. And please remember, especially in football, safety is everyone's responsibility. This week in Waukesha, 